we discussed last week continuous compound interest. Now, the model that models continuous compound interest models other kinds of growth as well. And we're going to look at three other types of exponential growth. Now, a general equation when a quantity grows at a rate proportional to its size is that p of t, here p is a function which measures you know, a quantity at time t. So p of t equals p of some zero, p of a time zero, a base quantity, times e to the kt. e is the exponential function, k is a constant, um, and we'll see that we can use some information to solve for this constant, and t is time in whatever time units uh, you want. Um, the first model we're going to look at is population. So population grows at a rate proportional to its size. We're going to use this information to find that constant and then use that to answer a couple questions. The population was 2,560 in 1950. Um, I believe this question said you know, 2,560 million. Um, I'll just leave it 2,560, you know, who needs to throw millions on these things? The population was 2,560 in 1950 and 3,084 in 1960. Use these to estimate the population in 93 and in 1993 and 2020. So the first thing we have to do is find our growth constant, k. And we can use this information to find that. Here, our zero quantity, our base quantity, will be the year 1950. And any time is measured from that base year. So here, um, well, let's say to find k, because that's what we're going to do first, and then we're going to, you know, once we find k, um, well, I, I'm not sure how it's going to fit, but once we find k, all we have to do is make a couple substitutions for these two. Um, but let's find k. Um, so our base year is 1950. 1960 is a future year. So our time quantity, our time variables aren't going to be 1950 and 1960. We're going to assume our zero year is 1950, and then our next information is given 10 years later. So. Um, using that equation over there, our quantity at time 10 is 3,040 equals our base quantity, 2,560, times e to the k, and t here is 10, because it's 10 years later. Now we need to solve this for k. Well, how do we do that? Um, you know, divide by the number. So you get 304 over 256, which reduces to what? 152 over 128, that reduces further to 76 over um, 64, which reduces further to 38 over, so this, these both have what, 16 in them? Oh no, they both have 32. So 38 over, uh, I forgot what number. These both have a 32 in them. No, they don't. They both have a 16 in them. So this is 16 times 19. Yeah. And this is 16 times 16. So 19 sixteenths equals e to the 10k. How do we solve this equation? Well, we need to get rid of the exponential. Remember, a logarithm gets rid of an exponential. So we'll take the, in this case, base e logarithm, the natural logarithm of the less left side, natural log of 19 sixteenths, equals natural logarithm on the right side. The e goes away. You're left with 10k, solve for k. You get k equals 1 tenth times the natural log of 19 sixteenths. I'm just going to check that that's right. 19 sixteenths. Oh, I guess I just, 
wrote that as in my notes. I wrote three thirty forty over twenty five sixty. Um, okay, and uh, this, you know, we could leave it like this. I'm just going to use the decimal for it. As a decimal, this is point zero one seven nine. So now we have that growth constant. We can use that to find the populations in these future years. In 1993, well, remember, our base year is 1950. 1993 is how much later than 1950? It is 43 years later than 1950. So we need P evaluated at 43. It equals P of 0, so 2560, times, I don't have room over here, um, now, I, I know, you know, it's, it's bright out, so there's a glare. I'm trying to avoid that. Where is the glare? Okay. Um, so P of 43 equals 2560 times E to the KT. K is, we'll use the decimal, 0 0.0179 times T, which is 43, because it's 43 years later. And what does this equal? This is approximately equal to 5360. And what about 2020? Well, the only difference is that we're looking at 2020 now. So P of, well, not P of 2020, our base is 1950. 2020 is 70 years later. So P of 70 is 2560 E to the K. 0 0.0179 times our time, which is 70, and this is approximately 85.24. So here, we looked at an example of exponential growth. A population will grow um, at a rate proportional to its size, and it can be modeled by that equation. Um, let's look at an example of exponential decay. Exponential decay follows the same formula, except note that k will be negative here. The k value will be negative, that will indicate a decay. Um, so we're actually going to look at two examples of exponential decay. First, we'll look at half-life. Now, half-life is uh, something in you know, chemistry and physics where you have a, a certain amount of some you know, radioactive substance, and the half-life is how long it takes for half of it to decay. So uh, in this example, the half-life of radium-226 is 1590 years. A sample has mass 100 milligrams. So before even doing these questions, to interpret half-life, well, we can use these numbers to interpret half-life. If we have 100 milligrams and it's a half-life of 1590 years, that means in 1590 years, there are going to be 100 milligrams left. Or, uh, in 1590 years, there are going to be 50 milligrams left. And we're going to, again, before doing any of these, we're going to use that to solve for k. So to find k, we're going to just use the half-life information. So at time 0, we have 100. In 1590 years, we have 50. So at time 1590, we have 50 left over. We start with 100. So 100 times e to the k times 1590. We want to solve this for k. Divide by 100, you get a half is e to the 1590 k. Solve this, we need to get rid of the e, so natural log of a half is 1590k. Solve for k, you get k is 1 over 1590, natural log of a half. As a decimal, and natural log of a half is also, you know, the negative log 2. As a decimal, what do we have? 0, 0, 0, 4, 3, 6. Negative point. Zero, 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 four, three, six. So we have our constant k, and we can use this to find, for part a, a formula for the mass after t 
years. So P of T, I'll still use capital P, equals the initial um, amount, which is 100, times what? E to the negative 0.00043678. Times t. So part B, find the mass in 1,000 years. Now first note, the mass in 1,000 years is going to be larger than 50. Because it takes 1,590 years to get down to 50. So in 1,000 years, half of it won't have decayed. And we'll check that our answer does give us something larger than 50. Uh, P of 1,000 is what? 100 e to the negative point zero 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 four three six times a thousand. And what does this equal? I have the decimal written over here somewhere. This is sixty four point six six milligrams. Because we're given uh, a unit of milligrams, which is larger than 50, so that answer does make sense. Part C, after how long will 30 milligrams remain? Well, in part B, the variable we were solving for was this one on the left side. In part C, after how long will 30 milligrams remain? Well, we're already given our left side quantity is 30 years. We're looking here for a time. So the variable we'll solve for is time. So 30 equals 100 e to the negative 0 0.000436t. And we want to solve this for t. Well, solving this for t is very similar to this. Um, well, it's almost identical to that. Divide by 100, so you get 3 tenths is e to the negative 0 0.000436 times t, log of both sides, cancels out the e. Um, you know, in math, if you say log without specifying the base, it almost always means the natural log. Um, natural log of both sides gives us this. Divide by this number, and in the decimal, we get that t is approximately uh, 2,762 years. And just like in part B, this answer for part C does make sense because you know, in 1590, 50 remains. In 3180 years, 25 milligrams remain. So 35 should be between 1590 years and 3180 years, and uh, we got 2762 years. Uh, let's look at another kind of exponential decay, which is a little more complicated than this one. Next, we'll look at Newton's law of cooling. So here what we're going to do is uh, see how the temperature of a bottle of water will decrease uh, when you put it in a refrigerator. And its um, temperature decays exponentially, similarly to uh, how a radioactive substance decays uh, exponentially using uh, the half-life. Well, given by the half-life, I should say. Um, so here we're going to have the same equation. K will be negative. K is a constant, but what's different from what we have been doing, P is going to measure the temperature above the ambient temperature. And here we're going to always just say we're putting it in a fridge. So P gives the temperature above fridge temperature. And we're always going to keep that in mind. Um, example, a bottle of water 72 degrees is placed in a refrigerator where the temperature is 44 degrees. So right here, we always keep this 44 in mind. Um, everything is going to be measured above that 44. In 30 minutes, the water is 61 degrees. Well, with that information, we can find an equation. We, well, we can find the constant K, so then we can find the equation which models the temperature of this bottle of water. So to find K, what are we going to do? Well, initial temperature. What is the initial temperature? Well, the initial temperature 
72 degrees. But remember, we're looking at temperatures as they relate to 44 degrees. 72 is 28 more than 44. So on the right side of this equation, the initial temperature is 28 above fridge temperature. At 44 degrees, I think it's considered way too high for a fridge, but this was in a math textbook, so. Well, is it a math textbook? Uh, I think fridges are supposed to be like 38, maybe, something like that. Um, where the temperature is 44, 72 is 28 above 44. So e to the k times t in 30 minutes, so e to the k times 30, in 30 minutes, the water is 61 degrees. So at 30 minutes, the water is 61 degrees. But we're not gonna put 61 over here because our temperatures are all considered in relation to 44. 61 is 17 more than 44. So we have this equation, which we want to solve for K. Uh, divide by 28. Log of both sides. Divide by 30. K is a 30th of the logarithm of 17 28ths. And as a decimal, now that fraction inside the logarithm is less than 1, so it will be negative. Um, as a decimal, where did I write it? Negative point zero one six six three. So we have our constant k. We can find an equation. So an equation, p of t, is the initial temperature, not, 40, uh, not 72, the initial temperature is 28 above 44. 28 e to the k, so negative 0 0.01663 times t. And now with our equation, um, with these, any of these, I'm not going to do anything weird with time units. I'm going to be consistent with time. Like in this, our 30 is in minutes, so our time units here are in minutes. Our constant k has minutes incorporated to it. I'm not going to ask you a question like, you know, what is the temperature in 12 hours, where you need to you know, make that, what, 7,200 minutes. It'll just be 7,200 minutes, 720 minutes. What's wrong with uh, it'll just be always in the same time unit. So here, what is the temperature in 30 more minutes? Well, we need p at 30. And what do we get? We get 28 e to the negative point zero one six six three times 30. And what does this give us? It gives us 10.3. And you might be tempted to just circle that as your answer, or rectangle it as your answer. But does that make sense? 10 degrees. Well, it's in a fridge where the temperature is 44 degrees. This water is never going to go down below 44 degrees. But remember, P measures temperature above fridge temperature. So here, the water after 30 minutes is, what, 44 plus 10.3, 54.3 degrees. And what about part B? How long does it take to get to 50 degrees? Well, in part A, our variable was P of T. Our, our, um, yeah, our variable was P of T. We wanted to solve for that. Part B, our variable is time. We're looking to figure out a time at which the fridge is 50 degrees. So we need to solve this equation. Solve this for t, divide by 28, what do you get? 3 fourteenths. Divide by 28, you get 3 fourteenths is e to this number. 
uh, logarithm of both sides. Gets rid of the e, divide by that, and you get t equals uh, is approximately 92.6 minutes. And six. Where's six from? Well, 50 degrees is six above ambient fridge temperature, 44. Um, so always keep that in mind. Maybe I'll put a second star on this. Star. Uh, always keep that in mind for uh, one of these. Um, so do practice these three types of exponential growth. Um, you know, solving these equations, you definitely do get used to when you do them, because you know, you'll notice in all of the ones uh, that we did, it did follow the same uh, general steps. Divide, logarithm to get rid of e, divide.